Dr. Linda Gronko, and this is Transgender Medicine Made Simple. We're doing a little series on gender affirming surgeries, and today we're looking at paying for the surgery and actually finding the money to pay for that surgery. So if you have already gotten a rough estimate of your surgery expenses and you know how much your insurance is likely to, to pay, you have likely discovered that you're going to need some more money to pull this off. So here are some ideas to consider today. So first of all, start with your family. And I know that this will not apply to everybody, but it certainly has applied to a lot of my patients where their parents have been able to help them with the costs of surgery or at least the logistics of having surgery done. Don't forget also that if you're a young person that you may be covered by your parents' health insurance up until you are 26 years of age. So that can be a huge help to get this coverage from your parents' health insurance. I've also found that grandparents are sometimes really happy to help with a kid's expenses for gender affirming surgery. Now, it's important that you, you don't put a person in a position to make them feel awkward, but for heaven's sakes, don't put them at risk of their own livelihood. But sometimes grandparents are able to help and are very happy to do so. You also might have friends who are financially able to give you a hand. Now, it's important that you ask for a loan, not a gift. Assume that you're going to be paying it back at an agreed upon schedule, agreed upon interest, and put this agreement in writing. And just because this is such a good karma loan that somebody um, helped you with, make certain that you satisfy every bit of the terms of the loan. Always remember that this is a loan and not a gift. Talk with your HR department at work and see if there are any things that they might be able to do to help you. So for example, could you be able to borrow from your retirement plan? If you do so, you will have to pay that back, of course, with interest, but that is something that might be available to you. Does your work have something called a cafeteria plan where you'll be able to use pre-tax dollars to pay for your surgery or surgery related expenses? Can your employer help you with time off for surgery and surgical recovery? For example, do they have FMLA help available or short-term disability income or other programs that might be of help to you? Understand that when you ask your HR department to help you, you do stand a risk of being outed at work if that's something that you want to be careful about. Now, there's also crowdfunding. This is a wonderful resource for many, many people. Crowdfunding, for example, GoFundMe is a campaign that I've run before when I was trying to finance the expenses of writing a book, for example, that cost a lot more money than I had available. GoFundMe is easy to run as a campaign. Um, what you do is you basically go onto the GoFundMe website, you tell your story, GoFundMe keeps two 2.9% of each donation that is made plus 30 cents for each credit card or debit card transaction. Your friends who really love you and care for you really do want to help you. And this is a nice way of helping people help you if that's something that they want to do. I have found that you can raise quite a bit of money with small individual contributions from a lot of people. Now, there is a blog that I found on GoFundMe and it's called The Ultimate Ultimate Fundraising Guide for Gender Confirmation Surgery. So look that up and find some very helpful tips for your own efforts. I also have learned that there are a number of organizations that provide either grants or scholarship type funds for people who are seeking gender affirming surgery. As examples, there's the Jim Collins Foundation and they fund at least one or two surgeries every year. And these are done by surgeons who then volunteer their pro bono time to the organization to make this possible. There's an organization called Gender Bands in Utah, which funds surgeries, I believe top surgeries for individuals. And there's also an organization 
organization called Point of Pride. I'm certain that there are many others, but look these up because they're definitely leaders in this area. And by the way, if you can think of other organizations, please let me know and I'll pass that along, the information to other people. Now, here are some direct ways that you can raise money. The first is to sell stuff that you have. And that might be a trading card collection. It might be a car. It might be musical instruments that you no longer use. And what you do is you basically find a social media marketplace like Facebook Marketplace. There's also Offer Up where you can put things um, on their app to sell what you have to, to sell or to show what you have to sell rather. You can sell through eBay. And if you have clothing items that might be fairly high end, you might want to sell these through a site called Poshmark. But the point is, there are ways that you can get rid of some of the things that you might not need in exchange for the cash that you really very dearly need at this time. Now, be advised of this. Remember that things like trading card collections or, or cars, for example, can really be, be worth quite a bit of value. So you want to make certain that you make good and careful choices in this. But I'm assuming that you will. Another way to get cash fast is to get a part-time job. Now, for most of us who are overwhelmed with the work that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, this may not be an option. But many people drive for either Uber or Lyft. You can do deliveries through DoorDash. And there are many ways that you can earn money on online by doing things like tutoring or teaching English to individuals. And these are things that you can do from the comfort of your home with um, some organized help available to you. But look it up. Now, another point that I wanted to make is that you can borrow money, but you want to be exceedingly careful about this. You can get a personal loan or borrow money on a credit card. But of course, if you do this and you default, you could be at risk of certainly lowering your own credit rating or even a risk of something as severe as, as bankruptcy. There's an organization called Care Credit, which many of us use in the medical field, particularly people who are doing aesthetics or plastic surgery. And what Care Credit enables you to do is to borrow the money up front so that you can get your services done. If you pay the loan back quickly, it's really not a bad deal. However, if you don't pay that loan back quickly, the interest rates rapidly accelerate and it can really be something that you can lose lose control over if you're not very careful with this. Now, you can borrow against retirement funds, for example. I don't know the details about this, but your accountant will, and probably your HR department individual will know how to do this. Be advised that something as serious as a home equity line of credit is something that may be available to you. It may be very tempting for you to use if you have equity on a condo or on a home. But remember, if you default on something like that, it can be important enough and serious enough to you that you really could stand the risk of losing your home or going into bankruptcy. So these are very important choices to weigh very carefully and discuss with somebody that you trust or a financial advisor. Now, in our next video in this surgery series, we're going to be talking about another very important topic, and this is choosing your surgeon for your gender affirming surgery. I hope this information is helpful to you. If it is, please like this video and subscribe to my channel, which is Transgender Medicine Made Simple. Please tell your friends and I'll see you at the next video.